everything will go boom, explosions all the way. Well, it is supposed to simulate an emergency. Hello everybody and welcome. When this video is published, SpaceX is less than 24 hours away from performing the in-flight abort test for its Crew Dragon vehicle. NASA is going to stream it live, link down below in the description and also up here somewhere. And I'm pretty sure SpaceX is going to do the same as well. And there's good reason for that. Not just to satisfy the curiosity of space enthusiasts like me. Before we go into any details, here's a bit of context for those of you who don't know about Crew Dragon and why it matters, especially to the United States. You can skip to this timestamp if you already know everything about the Space Access capsule and how it came to be. The International Space Station was launched in 1998 and needs a steady stream of supplies and to regularly rotate its crew. Up until 2011, the United States used the Space Shuttle to get astronauts to the ISS. In order to still have the capability to launch humans into space after the shuttle's retirement and to reduce long-term costs, the commercial crew program was initiated. After many delays, mostly due to funding issues, Boeing's CST-100 Starliner and SpaceX's Crew Dragon were chosen as the vehicles the United States will use to send astronauts to the ISS. In the meantime, NASA had, and still has, to rely on Russia to fly astronauts to the ISS with their tried and tested, but quite old, Soyuz spacecraft a political and financial dependency that the US understandably wants to get rid of. More on that later. Now we know why Crew Dragon exists in the first place, let's get to the upcoming test. In order for NASA to accept any vehicle to send humans into space, the spacecraft needs to provide a number of safety systems. One of these is the abort capability. You see, the people flying into space sit on top of this huge rocket filled to the brim with highly explosive material, also known as fuel. If anything goes wrong, things can go boom quite fast. And since there have been crew fatalities in the past, NASA's human-rated vehicles require a mechanism to save the crew in case of emergency. The traditional approach uses a tractor element, also called an escape tower, on top of the capsule, which is jettisoned after it is no longer needed, like the Apollo, Soyuz, and also the Orion spacecraft. But Starliner and Crew Dragon use a pusher system integrated into the spacecraft in case of SpaceX, or the service module in case of Boeing's vehicle. Both contractors have demonstrated their abort systems to work on the pad, with SpaceX as usual providing the more exciting footage. They really have that media hype thing nailed down. On a quick side note, SpaceX originally wanted to use the powerful Super Draco thrusters on the Crew Dragon to perform a propulsive landing, but in the end they settled on parachutes. Why is it so important that SpaceX nails the in-flight abort test? Well, there are multiple reasons. NASA is part of the US administration and has to justify its budget to the American taxpayers. So there's a big incentive to get the commercial crew program flying. I already mentioned that the program is behind schedule. There have been additional delays due to problems both companies discovered during testing. SpaceX experienced two setbacks. First, an already flown Crew Dragon exploded on the pad during a test of the Super Draco thrusters. Then there were issues with the parachutes, but those were apparently resolved recently. The in-flight abort test is now the only thing standing in the way of the first crewed mission of SpaceX's Crew Dragon. Boeing had their own share of troubles, also related to parachutes, but more recently with the first orbital flight test of Starliner, where it didn't manage to reach the correct orbit and therefore couldn't dock with the space station, something SpaceX managed to pull off during their first flight test, also called Demonstration Mission 1. 
So yes, it is crucial for Crew Dragon to complete tomorrow's abort test successfully. I'll be trying to watch it live and be rooting for them to succeed. Just like I rooted for Starliner to succeed. I know there are some people who are firmly in one or the other camp, but my only stake in this is that I hope the price for spaceflight will go down due to competition over the next decades or so, so maybe I one day can afford to spend my life savings on a flight to space instead of leaving my kids anything behind after I die. I'm joking, but I do want to go to space. Someday. Somehow. Speaking of money, the commercial crew program is planned to cost $8.5 billion in total so far, with $4.8 billion going to Boeing and $3.1 billion to SpaceX, with the rest split up among other companies that dropped out. As far as real spending goes, NASA has already spent $5.5 billion of that budget. That is a lot of money, but then again, the agency already had to pay close to $4 billion to the Russian space agency Roscosmos since 2006 in order to buy seats on Soyuz. Apart from that, they have to share the spacecraft with Russian cosmonauts. By using the commercial vehicles, NASA can send not just one or two, but up to seven astronauts at once to the ISS. This will reduce launch costs significantly over time, but by how much? So far NASA has bought 70 seats from Roscosmos, totaling in the already mentioned $4 billion, according to the administration's Inspector General report. The problem here is that the prices have increased from $21 million in 2006 to $86 million at the moment, and the trend appears to be continuing to rise. Still, and this is a very curious revelation, these prices are cheaper than what the projected cost for a seat on Starliner will be. 90 million dollars on average, according to the report. A seat on Crew Dragon, on the other hand, is projected to cost only 55 million. The Inspector General even specifically states that NASA overpaid Boeing for their services. On the other hand, the seat costs are all projections. We will have to wait for both companies to do actual flights for the final price for each vehicle. So what can you expect from Crew Dragon's in-flight abort test? They are planning to conduct the test during the point in flight called Max-Q, which is short for maximum aerodynamic pressure, the moment during launch where the vehicle experiences the highest stress. Therefore, it is the perfect condition for an abort test. If it works during these extremely adverse conditions, it will very likely work at any other point during launch. When this crucial moment arrives, Crew Dragon will fire its Super Draco thrusters and pull itself and the trunk away from the Falcon 9 rocket that is carrying it. Due to the aerodynamic stresses, it is expected that the booster will disintegrate, so there will be none of that cool first stage landing. Everything will go boom, explosions all the way. Well, it is supposed to simulate an emergency. A falcon needs to die for a dragon to fly. After Crew Dragon has successfully pulled away from the booster and the thrusters have shut down, the trunk will be jettisoned and the parachutes will be deployed. The capsule will then safely glide down and be recovered. That is, if everything goes according to plan. But SpaceX has a lot riding on this to go right, so expect that everything has been double and triple checked. They also have a lot of experience with the Falcon 9 booster and the Padabore test has already been successful. Let's hope everything works out fine and let's also hope for some good footage of the abort test, but since this is SpaceX I'm not concerned about that. If the test is successful, we might see Crew Dragon flying astronauts to the ISS within the next few months. Will you be watching the in-flight abort test for Crew Dragon live? Who do you think will fly a crew first, SpaceX or Boeing? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I tend towards SpaceX if they manage to pull this test off successfully, but we will see how it turns out. Either way, it's a really exciting time for space enthusiasts. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching, goodbye.